Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So, this video is going to be about the Jezebel spirit. This is a highly requested video after I did my video on, what is it called? The spiritual side of narcissism. A lot of people wanted me to go more in depth about the Jezebel spirit, so that's what I'm doing in this video. Now, in that video about the spiritual side of narcissism, there was some controversy in the comment section that I said I would address in video, but just for the sake of time so this video won't be too long, I'm actually going to address it in a separate video. So the separate video where I address any concerns or controversy is going to go up at the same time as this video. So it'll either be right before this video or right after this video. So make sure you go and check that out as well. So let's get into the Jezebel spirit. First off, the Jezebel spirit in the Bible. I guess I should start there. There is no Jezebel spirit in the Bible from what I have researched. Um, there is a biblical character named Jezebel which I am assuming that the Jezebel spirit was named after this biblical character and it makes sense because the Jezebel character in the Bible um, she had a lot of narcissistic traits and tendencies so it would make sense that the Jezebel spirit would be named after her. So basically Jezebel was a Phoenician princess in the Bible and she was arranged to be married to a prince named Ahab. Now if you look up Ahab online you will see that a lot of times people say that the Jezebel spirit is connected to the narcissist and then the Ahab spirit is connected to the codependent. So that's where those two terms come from. Jezebel being married to Ahab. So Ahab became the king of Israel and he married Jezebel so Jezebel became the queen of Israel. Now in Israel they only worshipped one god but where Jezebel came from she was a what is it called a polytheist I believe it's called where you worship more than one god and specifically she worshipped a nature god by the name of Baal I believe you pronounce it B-A-A-L. So you can already see there's some conflict here. We have King Ahab, the king of Israel, and his people in his land, they worship one God and one God only. And then she is a polytheist, so she comes to rule over Israel as the queen, and she brings her religious, her ideologies, I guess you could say, into Israel. And you would think that King Ahab would tell her, absolutely not, I'm king, this is my land, these are my people, we worship one God. No, he didn't do that. Instead, he pretty much bowed down to her, bowed down to her demands, and he actually built a shrine or like a temple or something along those lines in the capital city of Israel. So he went against his own religion and his own people in order to appease Jezebel. So immediately you're seeing the correlation between Jezebel and the narcissist and then Ahab and the codependent because he is operating the way a codependent operates, um, turning on yourself, uh, turning on your people just to appease the narcissist, just to get the narcissist validation and approval. So that's what their dynamic is. So Queen Jezebel was extremely um, narcissistic, obviously. She lacked empathy. She ruled with an iron fist and she just did not care. Um, she was pretty ruthless. You can go and look this story up because I'm not going to get too deep into it. Um, it's not even a really long story either, so you can look it up and read it right quick. Um, she was really ruthless and she demanded a lot of people be killed, a lot of innocent people were put to death because they went against her unreasonable demands. So as you can see, like I said, she behaves like a narcissist, um, especially with that lack of empathy. And one part of the story of the biblical story of Jezebel that stood out to me was when she had a bunch of prophets put to death. And that stood out to me because in my spiritual side of narcissism video, I talked about how the narcissist or someone, a narcissist who's operating under the Jezebel spirit, they will attack people who are spiritually, I guess you could say gifted, who are here for a divine purpose. Um, they will target those individuals and um, try to tear them down specifically because they are connected to source. They're connected to God and they're here to do a divine purpose or they're here to fulfill a divine purpose, I mean. So that is the story of Jezebel in the Bible. Um, she ended up being killed at the end of the story. King Ahab was killed 
there was some type of war some type of power struggle where he was killed and then she was killed as well and the man that came to kill her the story goes that she was waiting up in her bedroom and she put on a bunch of makeup and she put on a bunch of seductive clothing in order to seduce the man that was going to kill her and that is where the name Jezebel is used most frequently like in modern times if you hear somebody refer to someone as a Jezebel they're usually talking about a woman who is like seductive and who uses her feminine wiles to get what she wants to be manipulative and that's where that comes from because when she was about to be killed she tried to seduce the person that was killing her that was going to kill her it didn't work he threw her off the balcony she got fed to a pack of dogs but yeah as you can see um this woman has all of the narcissistic traits her trying to use her looks and her charm in order to um, get her way her having no empathy and putting people to death her attacking people who are spiritually gifted and who are connected to god and to source um her having her husband who's the codependent kind of do her dirty work for her a lot of narcissists do that as well um when she made him build that shrine in the middle of capital city so yeah you can see why the jezebel spirit is named after jezebel and why the jezebel spirit is said to inhabit a narcissist now in previous videos i've already stated like some signs of a narcissist but i should probably just run them down again real quickly in this video um just so you know you won't have to go searching in my other videos so signs that someone has the jezebel spirit signs that someone is a narcissist First off, the first obvious sign is the lack of empathy. People who have the Jezebel spirit or who are operating under the Jezebel spirit, they just cannot put themselves in another person's shoes or feel another person's pain. So they have no problem inflicting pain on other people because they just have no empathy and they just do not care. Um, they take joy in harming people and hurting people, which I will get into why that is later on in the video and um they just they don't have the ability like i said to empathize with someone and put them in put themselves in someone else's shoes so yeah no empathy whatsoever another sign would be the mental manipulation so people who operate under the jezebel spirit they have a tendency to manipulate the minds of the people around them to get what they want so they will gaslight you they will um lie to you confuse you just leave you in a state of confusion and in case you don't know what gaslighting is it's basically when someone causes you to question your own reality by denying what you know is true so it comes from the movie gaslight where the premise of the movie or the the plot of the movie is basically a man who is driving his wife insane by trying to convince her that her reality is um not as it appears like for example he'll put she'll put her brush on a table and then he'll take the brush off the table and put it on the bed and she'll come in like hold on i know for a fact that i put my brush here and he'll be like no what are you talking about it's on the bed so this woman is thinking that she's losing her mind and that might sound really light but it's not um causing someone to to question their own reality is a form of abuse is a form of mental and emotional abuse um and it really can drive someone crazy so narcissists or people who are operating under the jezebel spirit they tend to gaslight you you know for a fact that they did something or said something you confront them about it and they'll look you dead in the face and say no that did not happen and i've experienced this firsthand with two people who operate under the jezebel spirit um who have looked me dead in my face and who have told me no that never happened as if i'm stupid it's very insulting it's very insulting to your intelligence but yeah people are operating under the jezebel spirit um like i said a lot of mental manipulation and they like to put their victims in a state of confusion and again i will explain to you why they do that later on in the video the next sign that someone is operating operating under the Jezebel spirit is the love bombing. Now, this doesn't necessarily go for parents that have the Jezebel spirit. This more so goes for friends, co-workers, romantic partners, especially romantic partners. So they'll shower you with a bunch of love, affection, and attention, and they'll put you very high up on this pedestal. They'll put you on like a love high. Like they'll create this like euphoric type of feeling within you by the amount of love and attention that they give you. And then they will kind of snatch you off of that pedestal and start to devalue you. And then that high and that low actually causes you to become addicted to them. And this is done on purpose. And again, I'm going to explain later on in the video why someone operating under the Jezebel spirit would do such a thing um but yeah that is a definite sign if you are being love bombed by someone they're putting you up on the spider stool and then next thing you know they're snatching you off of it then they're putting you back on it then they're snatching you off of it um yeah that is called love bombing and that is something that the Jezebel spirit is very gifted and highly skilled at doing 
Another sign that someone is operating under the Jezebel spirit is their lack of accountability. They will never admit that they are wrong. They will never admit that they hurt you or they'll never admit that they did something that was hurtful because they just don't care. Um, and they will always find a way to kind of reverse it on you. So they've done something to you, they will find a way to not only convince themselves, but to also convince you that you made them do the thing that they did that hurt you. So they will never apologize. You will never catch somebody under the Jezebel spirit apologizing unless it's a fake apology to get what they want from you. And I think the last major sign that someone is under the Jezebel spirit is that they overreact to criticism. So they will fly into a rage if you ever try to correct them or criticize them. Even if you're doing it from a place of love and you're not doing it to be a smart ass, they will always take it wrong. They have a very fragile ego. They cannot take criticism and they will fly into a rage. And if they don't fly into a rage, they will instead um, just remain really quiet or they might give you the silent treatment to punish you, but they will fly find a way to punish you later on for criticizing them. Again, even if it's not, you know, you criticizing them to be rude or to be a smart ass, they will always take it that way and they will find a way to punish you. So yeah, those are the signs that someone operates on the Jezebel spirit. There are a lot more. Like I said, um, I have videos that you can go and look up. I'll link some down below um, that go more into the different signs of a narcissist. Okay, so now we're gonna get into how someone becomes a narcissist or how the Jezebel spirit takes over someone's vessel. This is going to sound very crazy to some people. It's gonna sound like some sci-fi shit to some people, um, but that's okay. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of knowledge that I channel or that I come across I understand why it sounds nuts to people especially people who have not undergone a spiritual awakening and I'm gonna do a separate video about my spiritual awakening um, that a lot of people have been requesting so yeah this might sound a little crazy you know take it as it resonates if it doesn't resonate with you then that's okay as well but a lot of this stuff like I said I have channeled and then I've channeled it and then also been led to certain articles certain videos and certain facts and information that kind of back up what I have channeled. So yeah, in order to understand the Jezebel spirit, you first have to understand entity attachment. Okay, so there are different planes of energy vibrating at different levels, right? That's why you'll hear people talk about the third dimension, the fourth dimension, the fifth dimension. If you've ever heard that, that is just different levels of frequency, different planes that are operating on different levels of frequency. So there are high vibrational entities that are on the higher planes of existence like angels um source angelic beings you could say like entities that are on a very high vibration that are vibrating on the um frequency of love and enlightenment and then there are also low vibrational entities that are basically existing in a lower density or existing in a lower vibrational frequency so these entities feed off of lower vibrational emotions like shame guilt rage anger like these entities feed off of those lower vibrational emotions so when i say feed you can kind of look at it as a parasite so a parasite is going to attach to a host and kind of suck life from the host suck energy from the host um feed off of the host you could say so these entities that are on a lower vibrational frequency they want to attach to a human and to kind of feed off of the energy of that human because you have to understand that these entities are non-human spiritual beings so it's certain emotions and certain energy that we can experience that they cannot experience but they are addicted to so for example if there is an entity that feeds off of anger, it wants to experience anger, but the only way that it can feed off of that anger is to attach to a human that may be vibrating on its similar frequency who's always angry. So they will attach to that human and then they will feed off of the anger of that human. See what I'm saying? I hope I'm making sense. Um, I'll try to insert some type of diagram or something because I know like just hearing it out loud, it's kind of confusing um, or can be confusing. So I'll try to put like a diagram. So. Recap, lower vibrational entities, right? They can attach to humans that are vibrating on the same frequency as them. So if they want to feed off of anger, they will attach to a low vibrational human who's always angry, and then they will feed off of that human's anger. They will attach to that human's org field, and they will feed off of that human, okay? So what does this have to do with the Jezebel spirit? There are some 
articles or some people that I saw saying that the Jezebel spirit isn't this type of entity entity that attaches to individuals that it is a territorial demon meaning that it's a type of entity that rules over a large area of people that it doesn't just attach to individual people but from what I have seen from what I have channeled from what I have seen in visions that's not true I have seen the Jezebel spirit attached to individuals okay because I was dealing with a narcissist with a narcissistic male and I had a vision of him when he was younger being sexually abused and the Jezebel spirit attached to him while he was being sexually abused because his vibrational frequency was so low and his auric field was so damaged, like his energy field was so damaged because of this amount of trauma that the Jezebel spirit was able to penetrate him, go inside of him, and I saw it travel up his spine and I saw it kind of like explode in the back of his head and then it just kind of circled around its head. And it was just like a brown like a brown black grayish like haze like a it didn't look like a demon like you would see in cartoons it looked like a fog almost you could say it looked like a fog and I saw that vision very very clearly when I was dealing with this narcissist so those articles that say that it's a it's something that is a territorial demon that it doesn't attach to individuals I don't know I, I beg to differ because I saw that with my own I wouldn't say my own two eyes because when I have visions I don't really see them the two eyes it just it's kind of like plays out like a movie in my head but yeah so this information like I said it can get a bit confusing sometimes that's why I recorded this video so many times already this is like my fourth time recording it um it could be a bit confusing sometimes because there's so much conflicting info out there and a lot of spiritual information you can only get it from like mediums who have channeled um certain knowledge and so it's kind of hard to fact check but I'm just going based off of uh, what I have experienced so let's talk about um child abuse and the Jezebel spirit because I like I said I specifically saw the narcissist that I was dealing with being abused as a child and um, the Jezebel spirit attaching to them as a child so when a child is being abused consistently like sexually abused physically abused when a child is being confused they let off this I guess you could say like an energetic call for help their vibrational frequency is extremely low so they're already like ashamed they're already um, scared so their frequency is extremely low. I'll try to put up a frequency chart so you can see like different emotions and what frequencies they're on. Um, so their frequency is already extremely low. So already they are a vibrational match for a low vibrational entity like the Jezebel spirit. So their their frequency is low. They're already afraid. They're they're already um, in a state of shame and panic. And they basically energetically let out a distress signal that they need help and when you let out a signal vibrationally um you can kind of call in certain type of lower vibrational entities so basically an abused child is already weak like their org field is already weak because they're being abused and then energetically they're letting out this distress signal and that allows the jezebel spirit to come and enter into the child and to inhabit the child okay so when a child is being abused they are experiencing something called soul loss where they will basically dissociate from their body while they're being while they're being abused and like a piece of their soul leaves their body while they're being abused to protect the child so that they won't have to feel the full brunt of that abuse and when the soul loss is taking place and they dissociate that's when the Jezebel spirit can come in and actually attach to the child because there are openings in the child's auric field this sounds crazy I'm not making it up I'm telling you I it's not like I read this and I kind of pieced it together I channeled this before I even knew any of this was real like I thought that I was just losing my mind when I was channeling this information and then years later I started coming across information that matched up with what I was seeing so I'm not making this up this isn't something that I just read online, just ran with it. I saw it before I even saw it, if that makes sense. So, pretty much, like I said, that's when the Jezebel can come in and um, pretty much um, influence the child. And from what I was getting, what I was channeling and seeing, it's kind of like the Jezebel spirit kind of acts like they're helping the child. Like, you know, I'll come into your body and kind of take the abuse for you while the child is dissociating, if that makes sense. It's like... I really wish I could like why am I not an artist I wish I could like draw this in some way shape or form I'll try to find like graphs or charts or something um but put it this way the Jezebel spirit acts kind of like a friend to the child that's being abused um 
and that's not even so far-fetched because if you think about the stories that you hear about the devil and demons they always come to you in a way they don't come to you with horns and with like looking all scary and treacherous they come to you as your your greatest desires so as a child that's being abused what's your desire to have a friend right and to have someone who protects you and to have someone who will kind of take those beatings for you so that they won't have to so it makes sense that jezebel spirit can come to a child as kind of like a friend but the child is not aware of what's going on and the child is not welcoming the spirit like come on in be my friend it all happens on a subconscious level um the best way I can describe it is like when a dog, you know when you blow a whistle and um, a dog whistle I mean and humans can't hear it but the dog can hear it. It's kind of like that. Like entities basically can communicate with your th thoughts through frequencies. Kind of like subliminal messages you could say. Like you can't really hear the subliminal messages but it's going into your mind. So entities that attach to you, lower vibrational entities that attach to you, they can alter your thoughts and the way that you act and the way that you maneuver. And the Jezebel spirit is a very highly intelligent type of spiritual being. So it the way that it operates, the way that it communicates with the child's mind, it's kind of like the child can't tell the difference between his own thoughts and the entity's thoughts. And then it becomes very, very intertwined and deeply penetrated into the child's subconscious. And that's why every narcissist that you meet, you'll kind of be like, what the hell? They all kind of operate the same exact way. It's like they're all being taught by the same person. Hmm, I wonder why. Like, how could it be that there's a bunch of people who have encountered narcissists and every single one of them have the same exact story all the narcissists operate the same exact way and that's also why you'll see people say that there's no cure for narcissistic personality disorder that's because the Jezebel spirit is so like I said advanced it has embedded so deeply within the child's subconscious that it's kind of hard to expel um, because the child is well not the child now you could say the the child has grown into an adult the adult has identified with this entity and does not know where the entity stops and where they start so you can't convince a narcissist that they're evil you can't convince a narcissist that they are under demonic attachment because all they're going to do is turn it around on you like have you ever tried to tell a narcissist like hey i've been reading about narcissistic personality disorder i think this is you they're going to turn it around and say no it's you like the narcissist that i was dealing with he straight up said i think you're a sociopath <laughs> He said, I think, I think you might be a sociopath, Shaniqua. I was like, excuse you? Like, me? I cry when I watch Lion King because I can feel Simba's pain. Like, what? Like, how can you, <laughs> like, stop the madness. So when he said that, it kind of basically solidified that he was indeed a narcissist. I was skeptical about it at first. But then when he tried to tell me that I was a sociopath, I was like, of all the things to try to convince me that I am, I know for a fact that I'm not a sociopath. Like, stop, stop these games. Um, I just knew, like, okay, yeah, you're a narcissist. But back to the point. Um, the entity, they have identified with the entity to the point where, no, you're not going to eject that entity from them. And they are not going to be, going to be able to expel it or eject it from themselves because they are not convinced that the entity is even there. So it's like, how could you, you know, how can you fix something that is not acknowledged that's why there are some people who are narcissistic meaning that they have narcissistic tendencies but they don't necessarily have full-blown narcissistic personality disorder and so they are a bit more self-aware and therefore they are able to um kind of heal from narcissistic personality disorder and there is a woman on youtube i think her name is sade sade or sade and she is healing from narcissistic personality disorder and i will link her channel down below and she is heavily involved in church and she said that the only reason that she was able to start to heal is because she hit rock bottom and then she turned to religion she turned to church so that just lets you know that this is something spiritual well i believe that everything that goes on in the third dimensional realm in the human realm is spiritual so there's always a spiritual backstory to everything now why does the jezebel spirit attack you you know why does it want to you know do the things that it does to you why does it want to keep you know you in confusion like someone who has the jezebel spirit who's a narcissist why do they do the things that they do to their victims okay so that goes back to what i was saying about entities lower vibrational entities right they feed off of lower emotions they feed off of fear they feed off of anguish confusion rage they feed off of these things right so it would make perfect sense 
for the Jezebel spirit or someone who has the Jezebel spirit to keep you in a constant state of confusion, to keep you in a constant state of anger, to keep you in a constant state of shame. That is one of the lowest frequencies that you can be on is the frequency of shame. And if you have ever been abused by a narcissist, you know that they make you feel completely ashamed of yourself. They make you feel isolated. They make you feel like you are worthless, like no one loves you. And they make you feel like your life is pointless and that it is meaningless. And when they keep you on that frequency, they are able to feed off of you. And that's why, what is that? I should have looked this up. I, I get this wrong in every single video. There's a method that is used to stop a narcissist from quote unquote feeding off of you and i think it's called the gray rock method or the gray stone method the gray wall method i'm gonna look this up the gray rock method that's what it's called the gray rock method if you think about communicating with a rock you're not getting anything back from a rock you're talking to a rock the rock is not responding so when you do the gray rock method pretty much what you're doing is not giving the narcissist any of your energy to feed off of so you just don't react to anything that they do and when I first heard about this method I tested it out on a narcissist and I kid you not within like maybe three or four days this narcissist was so drained so sick it actually scared me and sickened me to think that I was being used as spiritual food I guess you could say um, because I kid you not it was by no coincidence that all of a sudden this narcissist who's usually like all lively and upbeat and chipper all of a sudden when I was using this gray rock method they were just shuffling around like they had no life force it was the craziest shit I've ever seen in my life I kid you not okay sorry my camera died like I was saying that is further proof to me that someone who's operating under the Jezebel spirit um, is feeding off of its victims or off of um, the people that they are interacting with so now let me touch base on what I said in my video about the Jezebel spirit or the narcissist specifically attacking people who have spiritual gifts or who have like a spiritual divine purpose here okay now if lower vibrational entities exist which they do that means that they want to keep you vibrating on a low frequency so that they can feed off you so they want you to stay in a state of shame in a state of fear in a state of anguish they, they want you to feel like the worst version of yourself in order to continue to feed off of you now someone who has a spiritual purpose a spiritual guru a spiritual teacher whatever you want to put that label on them as they are here to help you to heal your traumas so that you can raise your vibrational frequency. So the point of my channel is to help people to identify their childhood traumas, identify their wounding, identify what holds them back in relationships. And if you think about it, the main point of my channel, like no matter how many different topics I address, it always comes down to one main point, helping people to overcome things that keep them vibrating on a low frequency, things that keep them in a state of confusion, in a state of fear, in a state of pain, and to help them to overcome Come that either by getting away from their abusive family and then moving away and flourishing and living their best life or by helping them to identify their um, patterns when it comes to love relationships so they can get away from abusive relationships and they can raise a vibrational frequency and attract their divine partner so that they can be in love like think about how it feels to be in love and to have someone love you back and to have it be positive like it's no manipulation there's no cheating there's no lying there's no nothing Think about how powerful that is. Like think about couples like Michelle and Barack Obama, Megan Good and Devon Franklin, um, Tia Mori and Corey Hardrick. Like think about these high vibrational divine partnerships, um, Ellen and Portia Del Rossi. Like think about how powerful that energy of love is. If you go in, on social media, everybody's always tweeting about relationships or they're always tweeting about like something having to do with love and that's because deep down inside we are all aware on a spiritual level that love is the highest vibrational frequency and that's why everybody wants to be in love because they want to be on that frequency when you're on that frequency of love you are experiencing what it feels like to be one with god to be one with source so the main point of my channel is to help people to raise that frequency whether they find a divine partner and they fall in love and live happily ever after or you know they just are able to break away from from their traumatic past even if they don't get into a relationship you can still vibrate on the frequency of love once you are able to heal from all that trauma you see what i'm saying so the point is that spiritual workers or gurus are here to raise your vibrational frequency to the frequency of love so you can become one with god and with source okay and lower vibrational entities obviously don't want that to happen and that's because they cannot feed off of you if you are not on a low frequency so naturally what makes sense to attack 
spiritual gurus or spiritual leaders because if i make a video right and i reach a thousand people and a thousand people watch my video it clicks in their mind like okay this is what i need to change about myself and they start to change and they start to raise their frequencies that's a thousand people that now are not food to that lower vibrational entity right so instead of trying to attack a thousand people one by one why not just attack the spiritual guru see what i'm saying like why not just go after the spiritual leader why not just attack them and try to bring them down so that then they can't help that thousand people you see and that's why a lot of spiritual leaders tarot readers and stuff like that if you go on their uh videos you'll hear them talk about interference and that's because we experience interference um a lot of times i will try to put out a video and i know it's about to be powerful because suddenly i'll feel sick suddenly i'll feel like i have to take a nap suddenly i'll feel like just things just start going wrong and my lights just start flicking on and off something happens to my camera my footage gets deleted like something crazy starts to happen and that's no coincidence and that's no uh, me just making excuses of why i can't get the video out that genuinely literally does happen to me and that's what i mean when i say um that these lower vibrational entities sometimes want to bring down someone who has a spiritual gift so if you feel like you are spiritually gifted even if it's not like you are a guru or you're here to teach people you could be spiritually gifted through art like think about people who have creative gifts if you like an artist how do you feel when you go a long time without creating art you feel depressed you feel down and you feel like you're on a low frequency right there is a reason for that that's why in my black sheep video i talked about you know the black sheep of the family being the most artistic a lot of the time and their narcissistic parents or family members might try to stomp that artistic gift out of them and tell them like no there's no money in that um you don't need to be doing that and sometimes it's harmless like sometimes the parents are just operating from a very ignorant mindset but sometimes it is done intentionally because your artwork may actually reach people on an emotional level that raises their frequency think about artists um musicians <clears throat> and people of that sort who you just connect with their art and it raises your frequency immediately they are doing spiritual work when they do that so therefore like i was saying it's best to attack that person with that creative gift or that um, spiritual gift or that spiritual knowledge because if you can keep them on a low frequency, then they can't help other people raise their frequencies. Okay, camera died again. I don't even remember what I was saying. Oh yeah, okay. I was saying that if the Jezebel spirit or someone who's operating under the Jezebel spirit can attack a spiritually gifted or artistic creative person, then um, they will keep that person's frequency low and therefore they will never step into their purpose or into their gifts and then they won't be able to help other people raise their frequency. So I hope that I articulated that well. I feel like I'm always saying in my videos, I hope that made sense and people get so pissed about it. They're like, stop saying that, you make sense. But sometimes I do feel like <laughs> because the way my mind is racing and I'm just like spitting out what I'm hearing in my mind um, I sometimes feel like I'm making absolutely no sense. So that's why I say I hope I made sense. So I guess I'll address um, What you can do to kind of cut the cord between you and the narcissist because It's like this. This is what I'm seeing in my head not only are you being fed off of by the narcissist like the narcissist is feeding on your energy but also there are other lower vibrational entities feeding off of your energy as well because the narcissist keeps you in such a low state of being so it's like this energetic cord that is connecting you and the narcissist right so that's why even when you are away from the narcissist like they've discarded you you still feel like they are kind of feeding off of you because they kind of are um when you have an energetic cord to someone they can still siphon energy through that energetic cord so it's like the longer you've been with the narcissist or um the more strong of a hold they have on you it's like the thicker the cord is the harder it is for it to break and then they can continue to siphon energy from you and a lot of people don't agree with this notion a lot of people think that this type of teaching or this type of information is just instilling fear into people and making people out to be the victim like oh they're feeding off of you you're telling you're you're basically saying that you're a victim because they're feeding this is just what i'm seeing in my head people you can take it or you can leave it you can go look it up on your own but this has been my personal experience i'm not trying to instill fear into anyone because what would be the point of that why would i try to put people in a state of fear what would that what would i gain from that um so like I said, this is just what I have experienced myself. You don't have to resonate with it, but you can go and look it up. So 
like I was saying, they are able to siphon energy from you. And that goes for any type of parasitic relationship, even if it is not um, between you and a narcissist. It could be just you and a person and you're both just toxic for each other and you're siphoning energy from each other. I actually have a video on parasitic relationships and I will link that down below because I have been a parasite to someone. Someone has been a parasite to me. Um, doesn't mean that I'm a narcissist, doesn't mean that, that person is a narcissist, but I'm, I'm just trying to make the point that this dynamic does exist, whether it's with a narcissist or not. So don't think I'm just saying a narcissist is just like this big bad wolf that's able to use this cord. Like, it's something that humans can go through even without a narcissist. That's my point. But anyway, if a narcissist discards you or you're trying to get away from a narcissist and you just can't stop thinking about the narcissist and you can't stop obsessing, they are still siphoning energy from you and you have to basically break that cord. Now, how do you break the cord between you two? <sighs> this is a bit complex. I mean, it's not really complex, but it's just going to sound too simple and people are just going to be like, girl, bye. But literally, the last time that I had an energetic cord with a narcissist, I broke it by pretty much praying for it to be broken. And I know people are just going to be like, really? Like, you're going to say prayer is the... That's... I'm telling you, that's literally what I did. When I came to the awareness that I was attached to this narcissist and that I was obsessed and my energy was being drained and pulled from me and given to this person. I remember I just laid down and first of all, it was so painful. Like I remember I just felt like my heart was being like wrung out like a rag, like the, the pain in your chest. You know what I'm talking about. If you've been in contact with the narcissist it feels like your heart is being like wrung out like a rag it hurts so like the chest pain is terrible so i remember i was laying down the pain was so severe and intense i remember i was just like calling out to god like please let this stop please please let this stop and i just like put all my faith i guess you could say in god in that moment and i was just like energetically like letting out like a distress signal like please like stop this pain and i woke up the next day and it was gone I'm not kidding, I'm not exaggerating, and I'm not saying that this necessarily will work for you, but this is what I did. But what I also will say is that the days leading up to that, I basically just let myself kind of purge the energy out of me. Um, it was probably like, I don't even, I can't tell you the time frame. I really, like that time period was a blur. But I remember I felt like I was going through withdrawal symptoms, so I would just lay down and kind of just let the pain just like run through my body. Um, and I feel like I kind of like purged a lot of that energy and any type of low vibrational entities that were attached to me through that energy. I feel like I purged it out by like starving the energy because every time that you like contact the narcissist, every time you check their social media or every time you allow yourself to kind of like take part in actions that like make you feel ashamed, you know, like contacting the narcissist and blowing up their phone, like things like that, that make you feel shameful. Um, I feel like it kind of strengthens the core and it also opens you up to other lower vibrational entities to feed off of you and basically what i did was kind of like purged it kind of like when you're on drugs and you go cold turkey and you're having those withdrawal symptoms that's pretty much what i did and i think young pharaoh if i'm not mistaken he has a a video about entity attachments and how to get them off of you and i think in his video if i'm not mistaken he talks about starving an entity like starving a parasite um in order for it to get off of you and i feel like Prayer along with that that period of like fasting is actually what started to clear that energy away from me to the point where when I really, really felt like I couldn't take it and it was at its worst, I just like called out to God like, please, please, please get this off of me because like, it hurt so bad and I've been hurting for so long. Let this, let me allow this to let this go pretty much. And the energy fell away from me. I kid you not, I woke up and it seemed like a distant memory. So I feel like fasting, spiritual fasting, um, when I say spiritual fasting, I mean having no contact with the the source that is draining your energy, letting that come up out of you, letting yourself experience that withdrawal, those withdrawal symptoms and that pain, along with staying very close to God and praying and having faith is the way that I broke the attachment. And again, I hope nobody gets offended by this because I see online a lot of people are just like, <laughs> they're so pissed when their grandmothers or like their parents tell them like, you need to pray away that depression. Just pray it away. I know that it's so offensive to hear that. I know exactly what people are talking about. It's so, it's just so dis dismissive and disrespectful. Um, So I'm not trying to come across like that at all. Like I'm saying, oh, you've been narcissistically abused? Pray and it'll go away. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking specifically about like 
getting those entities off of you whether it be the jezebel spirit that has attacked you or any type of law vibrational entities so i will link young pharaoh's video down below um and again this advice is no substitute for good old professional help and therapy because obviously if you have been abused by a narcissist there's a spiritual side to it but then there's also a psychological mental side to it we are having a human experience here so we can't just skip over the human side of healing um so a therapist will definitely help as well. A therapist actually has the ability to raise your frequency because a therapist is a safe space for you to express your traumas and to have someone help you through it. And that alone um, shifts your shifts your state of mind and kind of raises your vibrational frequency from feeling isolated and ashamed to feeling um, somewhat understood. So yeah, um, therapy is always something that I recommend. Now, one thing that I wanna to touch base on and then the video's over because this is going on too long. <laughs> is generational curses and transgenerational entities i think they're called so okay this is something that i also kind of channeled is also something that it's hard to explain how i get my information i don't know why i even keep trying to explain it um just got to kind of take my word for this and if it sounds crazy to you you can just do your own research always take everything i say with a grain of salt and do your own research that goes for me or any other spiritual gurus so generational curses or transgenerational entities basically from what i have been shown is that there are entities that do get passed down through generations and i do believe that the jezebel spirit could be one of them um if you have a narcissistic parent it stands to reason that they had a narcissistic parent that person had a narcissistic parent and then it goes back generation after generation and i believe that this jezebel spirit actually does linger around people in their bloodlines um when a baby is born it's kind of like they are lingering around the baby waiting for the baby to experience some type of trauma which naturally the baby's going to experience if they have narcissistic parents and then they're able to latch onto the child so it's kind of like a spirit that kind of is always hanging around um generation after generation just waiting to latch on and i feel like there's a jezebel spirit there's also the ahab spirit so the spirit of codependency and the spirit of narcissism and i feel like they operate within the same family and then some children become narcissists some people some children become codependents and that goes on and on and on until we grow up and we become aware we come across new mind frames youtube channel and <laughs> we decide that it's time to heal these um generational curses and to heal ourselves and then we break that curse and then the jezebel spirit and the ahab spirit and any other spirits of depression anger fear lust and all these other crazy things that um you see happening generation after generation they can be broken and that's why we are entering the age of aquarius we are entering the age of enlightenment because we have the information and the knowledge now to stop these generational curses right here like we have it, access to the internet we have access to all this knowledge so that we can stop these generational curses and that we can eradicate these lower vibrational entities from um plaguing us and keeping us stuck and in, in our lowest self when we can be vibrating higher and ascending and becoming one with god and becoming one with source and operating on the frequency of love and living our best lives so yeah i just had to add that in um i think that that's it I think that that is everything. I think I covered everything. This video is going to be like an hour long. I feel like I've rambled on for far too long. So I'm just going to end it here. Make sure that you watch my other video on um, addressing the controversy in my um, spiritual side of narcissism video. I'll clear up any confusion that was there. Um, the comment section will be open to obviously share your thoughts and ideas with each other. And thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.